Hello and welcome, Dirty William here with a new series, at least a series that I hope to keep up with. Magic the Gathering is a thing that I really, really, really like. I have not played the paper version in quite some time, the reason being it's very, very expensive. You're talking about $400 for a really good competitive deck for like Friday Night Magic and then going off to um, tournaments and things like that. It's a very fun game, but it's so, so expensive. I tried Magic the Gathering online for quite a while. The interface and the look of the cards I didn't really care for, so I kind of got away from it. I started playing back in October of 2003 when Mirrodin was released. A long, long time ago, right? But it was a great game, and I kept up with it. I got hooked whenever I found out card interactions. If, if this card does this, it will go with this card. It was just a very fun thing. I sat at my kitchen table and my nephew's kitchen table, and we played Magic the Gathering a lot. A lot of stupid decks, a lot of very fun decks. Uh, went to a couple of Friday Night Magic things, got into, you know, the top three or something out of seven people, <laughs> whatever it was. But my fun with the game was hampered by money. That's the reason why I downloaded this, because I found out that you can play it free. And that's a huge boon to me, because I'm cheap. So let's start and go into this. Now, I will be doing the story mode, because I want to progress through the game, unlock some things, and that's the way you unlock cards. One of the ways you can un unlock cards is by playing the game, progressing through doing these battles basically against uh, these other planeswalkers. So, um, long story short, this game is a collectible card game. Uh, it is online. Link down in the description if you want to download this. Uh, I'm going to be playing this even when not recording if something happens where it's not able to be monetized or, or, or whatever because I really miss playing Magic the Gathering. I want to play some more. So, let's go into story mode and see what happens. Magic is power. It has the capacity to create and destroy, manipulate and transform. Take a little drink. It can shatter the very laws that govern each world. The infinite planes of the multiverse are home to countless mages. If for all their mastery over their craft, they are each bound to their own planes of reality, blind to the true vastness of the multiverse. But some mages are born with a potential for more. The spark, this gift realized only upon facing a great ordeal. Once ignited, it allows the mage to travel between planes and draw from each plane's magic to reach heights of power otherwise impossible to achieve. They can begin their journey as a planeswalker. So there's that thing that just happened. Um... Yeah, so basically in Magic the Gathering there are five colors. White, blue, black, red, green. And each of those correspond to a thing in the game. White is for order and purity. Blue is for uh, manipulation and intelligence. Uh, black is for uh, corruption and uh, gaining things at all costs. Greed. Um, red is for chaos and fire, and green is for nature and big beasts, basically. Uh, so let's see what we're going to do here. Uh, the basics. Learn the basics of magic to prepare you for the adventures ahead and unlock story mode where you can uncover the origins of powerful planeswalkers. Uh, planeswalkers are, as the cutscene described, mages who are able to go through the multiverse and see different uh, planes of existence, basically. So we're going to earn 30 fake monies. So that's good. So let's play this. Your training begins learning the basics of magic duels in these fun and rewarding skill quests. Now, these skill quests, 
I saw a little bit of the uh, game that came before this, the uh, Duels of the Planeswalkers, and some of the things that you have to pull off, uh, you're doing X number of damage in a, a round or something like that, that's really hard to do. So we'll just see what happens with this. Okay, me versus him. Okay, uh, I can click here to stop the Welcome timer. To magic duels. Yeah. You are a planeswalker. Hi, a I'm a planeswalker. Mage. Dueling across the myriad worlds of the multiverse. Right. Your story starts with these <coughs> story quests. Challenges designed to hone your skills and prepare you for combat. <coughs> if you'd like to replay a skill quest, you can do so from the help and options menu. Okay. Sounds good. So I have the ability to go back and do that if I want. Called a library. Your library contains the creatures and other spells you'll need to defeat your foe. Right. Each turn, you draw a card from your library into your hand. Only you can see the cards in your hand. Right. Uh, that's one of the, the things, the things that are on the, the battlefield here. Uh, everyone can see, obviously. Uh, everyone can see things that are in the graveyard. You cannot see someone else's library, what they have there, their deck, basically, and you cannot see anything in their hand unless a card specifically says you can do that. <coughs> Excuse me. You win the game by reducing your opponent's life total from 20 to 0. And there are other ways to destroy your opponent or win the game, basically. Uh, one of the ways you could do that is by decking them, which means there is a, a game rule that states if you cannot draw a card, then you lose the game. So if you mill somebody, if you take all their cards in their library and chuck it into their graveyard and they cannot draw a card, then they would lose the game and you would win. Zoom in on any card by moving the cursor over it and scrolling the mouse wheel up. Try it now. Okay. So I'm going to hover over this While and scroll up. Card, you can learn more about its abilities in the more info box on the right. Zoom out by scrolling the mouse wheel down to complete this skill quest. Okay, and the icons over here, those are not present on normal cards, uh, the physical cards. Uh, flying, obviously the creature has flying, it can only be blocked by creatures with flying. First strike means it deals its combat damage before other creatures. And vigilance means that attacking, attacking does not cause it to tap. Whenever you attack with a creature, it is turned sideways, called tapping. And tapped creatures cannot block, so it's tactics. It is, you have to... If you want to attack with something, that means you cannot block with it. However, a Vigilant creature can attack, and it can be a blocker the next turn. And obviously this card is a creature, um, as you can tell by creature and the subtype Angel. So we're good with that. Let's just go through these. I'm not sure if I have to do this to progress. Okay, we'll go away from that. Good job. You can zoom in on cards anywhere to learn more about them. Okay, we'll continue. In this skill quest, you'll learn how to attack with your creatures mm. to reduce your opponent's life total. Excellent. A creature deals damage equal to its power. The first right number in the lower right corner. When a creature attacks, it becomes tapped or turned sideways. Like that. This shows it's been used for the turn. Your tapped cards will untap at the start of your turn. So that you can use them again. You forgot to say that, lady. To complete this skill quest, finish off your opponent this turn. Which will be very easy because he's at four health and I have two creatures that I can attack with. Click and drag to my opponent. By clicking attack with all. After you've chosen which creatures to attack with, click Confirm Attack. Oh, okay. So I can either tap them individually. I can click and drag them to this way. Or I can attack with all. Well, obviously I'm going to attack with all because I want to do the last remaining four points of damage. I want to confirm the attack. He has no blockers, no creatures to block with, so he takes four damage and dies. Excellent. 
Attacking with your creatures is one of the surest ways to win. Helper bot. In the next skill quest, you'll learn how to defend yourself from your opponent's attacks. Yeah, the combat in Magic the Gathering is, you really have to think ahead. There are lots of things that can change during your combat. Creatures can block Toughness. Your opponent's attacking creatures. A blocked creature won't deal damage to you. Instead, it will deal damage to the creature that blocked it. And your creature will deal damage to the attacking creature. A creature is destroyed if it's dealt damage in a single turn equal to its toughness. The second number in the lower right corner. So this is the damage it deals, and this is how many hit points basically it has, how much uh, toughness it has. To complete this skill quest, survive your opponent's turn, and then win the game on your turn. Okay. So it's the opponent's turn. They're going to attack probably with both of these. I cannot block with to this block character. An or with this uh, one of your creatures creature. to the attacking creature you want to block. Once you've selected all the creatures you want to block with, click Confirm Block. Okay. So this is tapped. It's grayed out, as you can see. I cannot uh, use this to block. I can block with this guy, however. So what do I want to do? Well, I have six health left. This guy here will do two damage to me. This guy will do six damage, so I'd be dead. If I block this creature, the damage from the Craw Worm will still go through. I'll take six damage and die. So my best bet is to block the Craw Worm, take two damage, and go to four. And then on the swing back, next turn, I will be able to destroy my opponent. So I'm blocking this creature. I'm going to confirm the block. I'm dealt two damage by the Elvish Warrior. Craw Worm deals 6 damage to my Goblin Piker, and he dies. The Craw Worm now has 2 toughness left. That is the end of his turn. All damage is removed from the creatures. Creature. You survived the assault. Now it's your turn. First, play the land card you just drew. Playing more lands allows you to cast more powerful spells. Right, and about the more powerful spells uh, and getting more land on the table, uh, each one, each uh, uh, card has a mana cost on the top. For example, this is two green, which means uh, the player would have to tap two forests to play that creature. Well, if he didn't have two forests, he could not play that creature. The Craw Worm has a cost of four of any color and then two green. So if the opponent was playing mountains and forests, the green for forests and the red for mountains, he or she would have to tap two green, two forests, and four of any other color. It could be green, black, blue, or red in this case if they were playing a two color deck. And that would be able to play this card. So this is why getting that land on the table is very important because you can play powerful creatures, powerful spells like this. So, all right, I want to cast the mountain or put it into play. So I'm going to click on it and play it. Now, now attack. And win the game. I'm trying to talk, lady. So my opponent has five health left. I want to attack with this this guy because he has no way to block. He has all untapped lands, but I don't think he has an instant or anything that would be able to stop my attack. We haven't really progressed that far yet, so we're going to confirm the attack. Do the remaining five damage to my opponent. And complete this little part of the tutorial. Excellent. Remember, only untapped creatures can block. Now that you've seen creatures attacking and blocking, let's find out how to summon them to the battlefield. I guess this is what we'll get into now, talking about casting costs and things. To cast a spell, you need mana the magical energy produced by your lands. Each of your lands produces one mana when it taps or turns sideways. Tapping shows a card's been used for the turn. To see a spell's mana cost, look in the top right corner of the card. Right in there. For example, Elvish Warrior's mana cost is two green mana. 
To cast Lightning Elemental, you need one red mana. <coughs> Your mountain produces that. You also need three other mana of any kind. Any lands can be tapped to produce this three mana. After you cast a creature spell, that creature goes to the battlefield. Sorry, I had to cut there and cough real quick. Yeah, so basically whenever uh, the cards are in your hand, they are spells. So they're not technically creatures. Only until after they are on the battlefield do they become creatures. So we'll go ahead and continue. Creatures can't attack on the turn they're summoned. This is called summoning sickness. Summoning sickness. And indicated by a swirling effect. A creature with summoning sickness can still block incoming attacks. A few creatures have an ability called haste. Creatures with haste aren't affected by summoning sickness. Right, this uh, lightning elemental, it has haste right there. This creature does not, so to get the little swirly thing on it. In this skill quest, we'll start on your opponent's turn. To complete it, win the game on your next turn. Okay. All right, so he is casting yet another guy. It cannot attack. He's probably going to attack with both of these because I have no blockers. Your elvish warrior can't block this turn right. because it's tapped. The creature your opponent just summoned Which can't that attack guy. this turn, but it will be able to block on your next turn. Okay. So I'm going to be taking the four damage, two from one elvish warrior and two from another. So I'm going to go to two life. You can summon creatures to the battlefield from your hand by casting creature spells. To cast a spell in your hand, click on it. Okay. So this costs four. It costs three of any color and one red. So I have one red and I have one, two, three other colors, two green and, and another red. So I can cast this, he has haste. So what that means is when I play this creature, I will be able to attack with it. It does not have summoning sickness. I will also be able to attack with my elvish warrior. The game at this point is going to be won because if the opponent blocks my lightning elemental, he'll still take two damage from my elvish warrior. If he blocks my elvish warrior, he's going to take four damage from the lightning elemental. So it's pretty much a done deal. So we will left click on this to cast it. Automatically taps the lands that I need. And we're going to not show that again. So this is the attack phase. I'm going to attack with both. Instead of declaring your attackers individually, you can use attack with all button to attack with them. Don't show again because I like clicking on things. Confirm the attack. And this is pretty much the point where someone would concede because there's no sense in playing this out unless somebody has a combat trick. Well done. All your tapped cards, including lands and creatures, will untap at the start of your next turn, ready to be used again. For completing this Ooh. skill quest, you coins. earn some coins. After you finish Gideon's campaign, you can spend coins in the store to purchase booster packs containing new cards for your collection. Mm. Oh, get to open boosters too? Nice. I thought you just unlocked the cards, but I guess you actually can spend the fake money in the store, get booster packs and open them so you can get like a rare. It's like, oh, I hope I draw my whatever. Yeah, this is just like, just like Magic the Gathering. I'm sure it's, I mean, obviously it doesn't have every single card ever printed, but on its own, it's actually a pretty fun looking little game here. So, this is going to be the end of this episode. I have 30 fake monies here. What am I going to do with that? I'm going to be buying some booster packs after I complete Gideon's uh, challenge, his storyline. But that's going to be starting in the next episode. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, this is Dirty William reminding you to do the dirty work.